So now we have our basic two nav meshes and a link between them, and let's get our robot moving on them. So I'm gonna select the robot, enable the nav mesh agent component. I'm gonna add component to create a new script that we're gonna call directed agent. And I'm gonna create an ad. This is gonna be a very, very simple script. Directed agent goes into scripts, okay. So we're gonna double click directed agent and get rid of update, we don't need it. Uh, what we're gonna do is we are going to, first of all, add, importantly, using unityengine.ai. All of the navigation related components are in the .ai namespace. And so you're gonna to need to add that to be able to work with any of the navigation components. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a private nav mesh agent, which we will call agent. And in, in awake, we are going to get a reference to agent using get component. Then we're gonna add a new public function called move to location. This is gonna take in a vector three called target point. In this function, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say agent.destination, right? So this is a property of nav mesh agent, which is we can set the destination, which we're gonna have it seek a path to. And importantly, one of the cool things about nav mesh agents is that we just tell it where to go. It will try to route around obstacles and get as close to that destination as it can while staying on the nav mesh, right? So it shouldn't get stuck in walls or corners uh, unless that's the closest place that it can get. So it's gonna attempt to move to the destination and we'll say destination equals target point, which is a, a vector three that's gonna be provided by our kind of click to move to a target uh, raycast script that I'll show you in a moment. And then we're also gonna call agent.isStopped or we're gonna set agent.isStopped to false, right? This is a change in the API. It used to be a function called agent.resume. Uh, it's now been replaced by a Boolean value called agent.isStopped. So we're gonna set this to false uh, to set our agent moving towards their destination. And that's it. We're gonna save that. And we're gonna jump over to Unity. And we are going to, on the FPS controller, as a child, we have this agent targeter object and it has a Raycast destination setter script on it that I've already created and provided for you guys. This one, if you've watched this uh, show before, you will have seen uh, me using variations on this script. This is just basically a script that Raycasts from the camera to a point in the world and gives us data about where that point is and allows us to interact with the world by clicking on things. Uh, and I have a full, uh, 30 minute video on how all of this was created in great detail. Uh, and the script also has comments in it. So I'm not going to teach it. Uh, but what I'm going to do is in update in this if statement here, where we check if our raycast has hit anything, I'm going to set the destination of our directed agent. So what we need to do is add a public directed agent called Eight, let's call it directed agent because we already have an agent. Wait, oh, did I not make that public? And here we go. Here in our if statement at line 56, we're gonna say directed agent dot move to location. And we're gonna pass in hit dot point. So hit dot point is a point that has been stored by the raycast in a raycast hit variable. So we are gonna get the point, which is a vector three in world space that our player clicked on, right? Or kind of fired to, uh, where, the, where the raycast intersected with the level geometry with a collider, uh, and then set that point as the destination for our directed agent. It's that simple. So we're gonna save, jump back over, and wait for our field to appear here, wait for our scripts to compile. Now it appears we are going to drag our robot, which has the directed agent component into the directed agent field. And now if we enter play mode, 
we can jump over these walls and click on an area in the scene and we can see that our robot is off. Now we can see there's a sort of, whoop, where are you going, buddy? Come over here. It's trying to go somewhere funny. Come on down here. It became confused. There we go. Oh, so it's overshooting a little bit the point. Uh, what I need to do, let's modify his uh, settings a little bit. What do we got here? We need a higher angular speed and a higher acceleration. So, because I turned up the speed without turning up the angular speed and the acceleration. Let's fix that real quick. I thought I had fixed that in the one I sent for you guys. Still overshooting a little. Whoop. Not too bad. Let's raise the acceleration, I think, is the one that we need. There we go. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. All right, good enough. And of course, you're gonna to wanna to tune that to uh, whatever kind of settings you want. Now, one thing I just wanna draw your attention to, right? We do see, oh, let me do this, not in play mode. This, did I do 120? Um, we do see a little bit of a sort of a not, not beautiful little kind of teleport when it uh, crosses the nav mesh link, right? And so you can kind of take over at that moment when, it, if you turn off auto traverse off mesh links, you can take over at that moment and say via script, okay, you know what, we're gonna play this climbing animation or we're gonna do some rotation via script or do something else. I felt like it was a little out of scope for this lesson, uh, but that is possible, right? To say, okay, once we reach a nav mesh link, uh, instead of just teleporting across, uh, and there is actually a script um, that's on the forums that I can uh, link in the chat and I can link uh, with the archive uh, that will allow you to do that. So that's a, a, you know, if you want to get around, if you're happy with the teleporting, that's fine. You can just use it. But if you want to have some kind of more slick transition there, you can, uh, you can implement that. Uh, but I'm not going to. Um, okay. So now we have our scripts to control our robot. Uh, we have our basics of our navigation setup. And the next segment is going to be generating our nav mesh at runtime. Uh, Sirius Wolf asks, so if I'm creating a level during runtime, generating, does it make sense to add all the walkable geometry to the child of a geo and then bake it all at once? Well, um, I would say it depends. Uh, it depends on how big your level is. And if you have an appropriate moment to do that generation, uh, you know, if you could just generate it all at level startup, that's probably a nice safe time to do it before the player gets into a performance sensitive situation. Um, but I have to say, I did some tests, admittedly with small, simple levels, where I was literally regenerating the nav mesh every frame because I had a destructible environment. And it was fine, even on my like older laptop. So. I would strongly advise you guys to do performance tests uh, to see what you can afford in terms of nav mesh generation. I think it's going to depend a lot on the size and complexity of the nav mesh you want to generate. Um, large distances, I think, are going to be more expensive. Um, so, you know, your mileage may vary. But I would say that uh, attaching everything to a single game object and baking it on start would not be a bad idea. That's kind of what I'm going to do here. 